Hello, so I thought I'd better do a part two video and um, document my next step that I've um, accomplished so far before I get too far along and I can't remember what I did. <laughs> um, the paper pack that I chose for this series, for this album, is out of the K K and Company. Um, I picked this up at Joanne's, I think, in the beginning of summer or something. I don't know. I always loved it, and I, I actually found it on clearance, and I had to have it because I was eyeballing it for a long time. <laughs> um, and I also um, have some of the romance novel papers because I absolutely love them. I will probably reorder some more and make something for myself because I love this. I love that line. They have really cute journaling cards. And um, I've already cut some out, but I don't have them finished as far as um, I have to do the little flap. I used the hole punch, did a little half circle, so that way I could pull my little cards out. And um, But I have to close complete the closure. I haven't decided whether if I want to do buttons or use, there's little round circles that are included that you can use the little Brad style um, things on there, but these little journaling tags are fun. I've been trying to make them look um, roughed up and vintage looking, and um, there's another one. So I just kind of rough them up and curled up the edges and trying to make them look old and vintage. Um, I even thought about, I used my cuddle bug and I smashed some bottle caps. I even thought I could, I don't know, that might be a little bit big on that, but um, that's where my train of thought was going. I was even thinking maybe possibly putting something inside there that would um, document the occasion, something that pertains to that page, maybe not necessarily on that journaling card, but on the um, on somewhere on the page itself. I thought that would be kind of fun to use. Um, I used, on all those edges, I used my Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the vintage photo. And then all around... The um, book edges, I used the plaid uh, acrylic paint in, I think it's called chocolate. You have to have your daily chocolate, you know, so why not put it on your album? <laughs> um, but one reason why I decided I didn't want to, I'm not planning on a lot of this being exposed on the page, so that's only 57 cents for a bottle. You can't go wrong because the majority of it's going to end up getting covered over anyway. Um, but I, on my last video, I showed how I was going to do the um, spine insert. I measured, I, fit, I believe it was a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch on each side. It may have been a, a quarter and a half inch on each side. It's hard to remember. That's why I'm doing this journaling, because I cannot remember things. I forget so easily. And then in the center, I don't know if you can see, um, that I scored, there's a quarter of an inch uh, marginal scoring section there. So that way, when it opens and closes, it will allow for some room for the embellishments and things that I decorate with. So as you can see, I don't have my um, cover for the binding attached yet because I want to make sure I know exactly what I'm going to do with the... Um, decorations on the front. So what I did on the spine, um, you can see the chipboard. You can see the, the layers of the chipboard and the envelopes in between. And I don't know if it was the best choice or not because I've never made an album like this before. I've made albums before, but not like this. <laughs> so this is a whole new experience for me. And I have other <clears throat> adhesives and stuff, but I already had the Mod Podge out. So I was in the Mod Podge mode. <laughs> and that, that's what I ended up using because it seems like it just really binds really well. And 
um, so far so good. I've been really pleased with how it's applied and, and I've been able to use it. But um, I picked up this muslin fabric the other day. Um, so that way I would have... I actually bought it with the intent of making some trimmings and flower and different embellishments out of that. But um, I was <laughs> glad I had it on hand because... I thought I really need something to put on that spine mesh before I um, complete it so that way it has a little bit more stability and reinforcement. So I cut a strip, I measured the size of the binding and I cut a strip of the, uh, the width and then um, just a little shorter than the length because I didn't want it showing on the inside. And then um, <clears throat> I measured this piece of um, paper the same, I measured it the, I think two inches um, for the front, two inches for the back, and then I allowed three inches for the back seam, the back spine, because I wanted to, I didn't want it to be too snug and tight so that way when the um, binding, when the album would curl and you know, move around, that it would have plenty of room for play and to um, expand because I didn't want, I thought if it, if it was too perfectly fit, then eventually it may start uh, losing its strength and give out. So um, I hope that in the long run I will be glad that I made that choice <laughs> and not regret it for some other reason. But um, <clears throat> this paper, I cut it to the size that I needed and then I cut the muslin a little uh, larger all the way around with my pinking shears and then I <clears throat> excuse me I applied it to my paper with Mod Podge and let it dry but before I did that I um, I inked all my paper edges with a distress ink so that way the spine would have that aged look to it on the edges and um, I use a little bit on the muslin too after I did the Mod Podge. <clears throat> so anyway, that will go on the end here. And I'll adhere that after I'm done. But I'm trying to decide uh, on the front cover exactly what I want to do. So far, I've used... Um, I adhered the, the paper that I'm going to use. And then I have um, a whole bunch of old patterns because uh, I've I've sewn a lot of different things and I've got patterns that are just coming out from you know old stashes and stuff and so I thought well if I'm not going to use them I might as well use them <laughs> so I'm repurposing them into my scrapbooking projects and I use a little bit on the bottom and on the top here with the Mod Podge and then when it was dry, I used my Distress Ink on top of that. And that is for the purpose of just wanting to build um, layer and texture and um, to my page. So I'm kind of wanting it to look more vintagey and shabby chic or whatever. So I'm, I haven't really decided exactly how I'm going to um, assemble the front cover of my page. I know I want to um, do a black and white of my parents on the front for their 50th. Uh, I'm not going to use lace that light in color. That If I decide to use that lace, I'm going to coffee stain it if I don't find some other lace to use. I picked this up at Joann's. Not Joann's, I'm sorry. But I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. They were having a sale on their trimmings and I thought it was so pretty and dainty and I thought that would look really pretty um, assembled on their album somewhere and then my other purpose too is to um, on the binding I'm going to make a ribbon tassel that will um, t tassel down <laughs> I guess you might as well say on the upper corner and use some of these fun pretty things. I thought they were so cute. I couldn't resist getting them. And um, I've just been picking up 
different things that I think I might be able to use. If I don't use it on the front cover, I might, you know, probably use it somewhere on the album. But I just love all those little um, cute embellishments. And I also picked this up. I thought this was really cute. I may use that possibly on the edge of the binding on the spine. So, and if any of you have any ideas that you want to share with me, I will be happy to accept your ideas because that's where I, on YouTube, I've learned so much from all of you guys, and um, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much for every all everybody that's posted videos and and um, some of the ideas I come up with myself, but a lot of them I've gotten from other people on the videos too. So I really appreciate everybody sharing those. Um, I have some of this tool I may use. I don't know this. <laughs> I picked this up. Or well, I actually ordered this online. Um, I may have shown this on, on a haul video. I don't know. I, I'm thinking I may use this on a page for my mom on her likes. If I can hold it still. and um, She loves she loves bluebirds. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that would be kind of cute if I put it on a kind of did a personal page for her and then did a little blue, bluebird embellishment there. Do something a little fun. So I'll figure that one out. And then um, I was planning on doing, I got these on clearance at Hobby Lobby. I was thinking about doing something with that on the inside. I have, I, I just started adhering some paper. You saw a little bit of it. I'm going to do like when they're some uh, baby pictures or little kid pictures in the front. And I'm going to do some of those um, inserts for holding photos. Um, the layer, layer uh, lift, I'm getting a mind blank as far as what they're actually called, so pardon me for <laughs> uh, not knowing the exact term. But um, there's a lot of videos out there that have tutorials on making the um, flaps inside for an album page. So you can put multiple layers for adding more photos and um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. And on this one, both of my parents, they met at um, Lakeview High School and my dad played the saxophone and my mom played the uh, French horn and she was also uh, a majorette and so I'm going to try to do something fun with that page, and that's why I picked up these stickers and thought maybe I may be able to use them somewhere on there. Just a little something fun. And um, so I don't want to make this video too long because I'll have more coming. <laughs> but um, like I said, if you have any tips or ideas or anything you want to share with me, you can either leave a comment or a private message me, and I will appreciate um, your thoughts and ideas. Thank you for watching this video. Bye.